You probably don't want to end up looking like this in your first triathlon, right? No! Even if we feel like we are dying on the inside during a race, we want to look strong on the outside for everyone cheering us on. But in our over 12 years of experience helping tens of thousands of athletes reach the finish line their first race, there are five things that most beginner triathletes get wrong. And the problem is that when things go wrong in triathlon, they go very wrong. So we're going to help you avoid all of those potholes here today. What's up motivators, my name is Taryn. When ordinary people want to accomplish something extraordinary in endurance sports, they choose our totally free motive training plans. You're ready to take on that next big challenge? Let's do it. Now, I remember my very first triathlon when I hopped off the bike and I started doing the Frankenstein walk all the way through transition two to get out onto the run, trying my best to look, well, not like I was dying. Everything from my calves to my quads were all locked up because I hadn't done any brick runs. And this is one of the biggest errors of most new triathletes. A brick run is when you complete a bike and then you go immediately into running after. And this is critical for our bodies to learn how to do because we have to reroute the blood flow very quickly from our biking muscles where we are held up by the bike and the pedals and the seat and the handlebars to holding ourselves up completely with our entire body weight bearing down on us with every running stride. So when people train for their first triathlon, most of them tend to just swim a bunch and bike a bunch and then run a bunch, maybe even throwing in some structured workouts, but very few beginner triathletes will do structured brick runs going immediately from a bike to a run. And this is critical. For a sprint triathlon, you need to do at least six to 10 of these runs. For an Olympic triathlon, something more like 10 to 16. For a half Ironman, more than 24. And for an Ironman, probably more than about 40 or 50. These brick runs don't have to be long and our motive training app, most of them are only about 10 to 30 minutes long. You see, the purpose of doing a brick run isn't necessarily to do a full run after a bike workout. It's just to get that quick reroute of blood flow so that your body knows how to run after a bike. And then roughly how long does it take you to start fatiguing so that you have some sense of pacing? Which then leads into the second problem, and that is pacing. Almost every new triathlete is going to get their pacing wrong. You're either going to go too slow and leave some time out there on the course, or you're gonna to go too fast and leave a lot of time out there on the course because you are suffering throughout the entire race. Now, pacing does get better with experience and doing a lot of races, but that doesn't mean that you can't get your pacing more dialed in ahead of the race to give you a better chance of doing well in that race. As far as the swim goes, you should swim very slow. For your first triathlon, it isn't even going to make any difference if you get into the swim and work really hard because most new triathletes are very inefficient in the water. So if you work really hard working trying to get very fast in the swim portion of the race, you're probably just going to flail a little bit more, tiring yourself out more, but not actually going any faster. So you should think about the swim as just mandatory transportation to the actual start of the race, going as slow as you possibly can, holding yourself back. The way that you figure out the bike and the run pacing is in all of your training leading up to the race. Every week you should be doing a bike to run brick workout and what you'll do is bike and run roughly at and slightly above the pace that you think that you can hold during the race. What will start to happen is you'll start to get a sense of how much is not enough pace and you can actually push a little bit more and how much is too much and you're likely to fade. Do this week after week after week leading up to a race and you're going to get a sense of what your pacing should feel like. But here are some guidelines to help you. Your rate of perceived exertion on a scale of one to 10, where one is just completely easy and you're walking to the end of the driveway and 10 is going so hard that you're about to throw up, a sprint triathlon should feel like about an eight or a nine. An Olympic distance triathlon about a seven or an eight out of 10. A half Ironman triathlon should feel like about a six or seven out of 10. And an Ironman really shouldn't feel like a race at all. That should be about a five out of 10. The next issue that's really common to beginner triathletes is how they go out and structure their bike training. 
While in the run portion of a triathlon, you can get away with some fairly unstructured running, although structured run workouts will do much better than unstructured workouts, but the cost of doing unstructured run workouts isn't nearly as severe as doing unstructured bike workouts. The problem that most beginner triathletes get into with bike workouts is that they just go out and ride. Maybe going a little bit harder on some days, a little bit easier on other days, or going at kind of a moderate pace. But what happens is this isn't hard enough to build up any speed and it's not long enough to build up any endurance. And with the bike portion of most triathlons taking up more than 50% of the time that you are going to be out there in the race, also having to get off of that bike and be fresh enough to run after, the cost of not being bike fit is enormous in a triathlon. We recommend, and we outline this in our very highly rated book, Triathlon Bike Foundations, that there should be two bike workouts every single week that beginner triathletes do. One bike workout should be low intensity, but fairly long. Whatever long is to you, just make it long. So if 20 minutes feels long, do 20 minutes. If 50 minutes feels long, do 50 minutes. But what you should do is keep the intensity low and then build up the duration of that ride by about 10% every week. So if you're starting out at 50 minutes, second week do 55, third week do 60. Take a rest week every third or fourth week, going down by about 40% of what you did the previous week, and then keep ramping back up. Build this up to the point at which you ride longer than the actual distance of the race. In the other workout, you should be doing intervals where you're going anywhere from 15 seconds to eight minutes really hard, interspersed with rest periods where you are recovering and then getting into another interval. And what's going to happen with these two workouts is with the long, easy ride, you're gonna build up a lot of endurance. And then with the interval ride, you're going to build up a lot of speed so that when you get into the race, you're going to be able to go long enough and not have the high effort level of the speed in a race actually cook your legs before you even get to the run. The fourth thing, the biggest thing that most triathletes worry about, and it is the swim. What happens with most beginner triathletes is they start worrying about the swim and they figure they are going to solve that problem of not being ready for the swim by swimming. Newsflash, you aren't going to learn how to swim by swimming. If anything, just going out and getting into a pool and swimming a lot and not actually learning how to swim might actually be doing you a disservice because it's ingraining really bad habits and programming your brain to flail and panic and not actually be controlled and calm in the water. Instead, what beginner triathletes should do is focus on a program where you learn how to be comfortable in the water before you even start swimming. What this means is that before you even get into doing structured swim workouts, you should probably spend about four to eight weeks first learning how to breathe in the water and building an instant calm breathing response where the second that your face goes into the water, you start breathing out really forcefully. And then second, once you're able to breathe in the water, then learning how to float without flailing and pushing yourself up with your hands and flailing your legs to stay balanced. If you can just learn how to breathe and how to float in the water, then all of the swim workouts that you do after will actually have an effect. I'll link to a full video about how to learn how to swim for triathlon at the end of this video. Finally, the last thing that triathletes get wrong is their nutrition. You can do all of the good training in the world, but if you get into a race and you aren't giving your body the fuel that it needs to go at a very hard effort level, you aren't gonna do very well in that race. What happens is most people tend to think of nutrition as an afterthought when they're in their first few triathlons, or they've heard that carb loading and carbs and carbs and carbs and carbs are king, so they take on way too much. In both cases, your body is going to underperform. There is an almost exact amount of calories that triathletes should be taking in while they are exercising and in a race. And it's roughly 25% of the amount of calories that you burn. And this is unique to you. So if you are a larger athlete, you're going to burn more calories. If you are a faster athlete, you're gonna burn more calories. If you're a smaller or slower athlete, you're going to burn fewer calories. So all of the generic advice of one gel per 30 minutes or take 60 grams of carbs per hour, all of it is just a complete guess. We will put a link in the description below to a calculator that's on our website where you can enter your weight 
and your speed of how long you expect your triathlon to take. And what will come out is a result of how many calories you should consume. But it's not just enough to show up on race day and take that amount of calories. You should start trying your specific race day nutrition on that once per week race simulation workout in the six to 10 weeks leading up to a race. So that by the time you get to a race, you know exactly how much you should be taking for your unique gut profile. Do all of those five things and you are going to avoid a lot of the biggest disasters that happen to new triathletes. Of course, having a great training plan will make a lot of this easier and you can get one for free that is personalized to your unique abilities and schedule and goals at mymotive.com. Finally, if you want to see that video on how to get started swimming, building comfort and capability in the water, click the video that's on the screen right now that will start with teaching you our reverse breathing pattern that will reprogram your brain to be comfortable in the water. Later motivators.